Ready? Tim, Tim Abs here at Denver Stadium. Uh, we'll go back to the BYU game first. Uh, a lot of talk about the altitude and maybe the players wore down and they just weren't able to adjust to the, out the different oxygen levels. What, what would you say about that? Uh, you know, we don't want to make excuses about that. We try to blame our performance on the, on the altitude or whatever. Uh, it affected some people and some other ones it didn't. So, uh, me personally, uh, kind of got to know a little bit. As the drive went on, a couple of plays in, you get counting off really bad. And then, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to breathe. I mean, most of the linemen kind of got oxygen after every drive just to try to, you know, try to breathe or whatever. But uh, we definitely weren't used to it. And uh, we knew going in that it was going to be, you know, their advantage, whatever their edge. So we just try to overcome it as much as we can. Just trying to stay focused. There was a big. There's a big difference between the first quarter and last quarter. You guys dominate the first quarter with over 200 yards of offense and in the fourth quarter, minus seven. So um, some of it had to be also, I guess, just poor execution. And, and an offensive line, well, at least eight sacks. Not all on the offensive line, but eight sacks. That's unusual for this group. Yes, sir. Uh, it was definitely rough. Uh, uh, just a huge momentum swing. First quarter going into the field, uh, you know the crowd started to get into it. I mean, it's like seventy thousand plus, but you know when they're you know on the field sharing, it's kind of hard to communicate. So that was one factor, and uh, like I said, they're, they're just doing so much stuff that it's just you know every play constantly, you know, blitz here, or, you know, showing stuff over here, and you know this is crazy because it's chaotic, and uh, you know it, it, it affected us. It definitely did. Uh, kind of lost focus, and uh, it was just hard. Uh, like I said, it was just a huge momentum swing, and you know, they definitely <laughs> had an edge in the, in the fourth quarter. Looking at this UConn team, uh, they've got also a, a big team. That was a big team you played last week. This is going to also be a big team. Um, what do you see when you look at the UConn offense? Uh, I mean defense. Or defense, yeah. <laughs> um, Good. I just, <laughs> I just try to uh, you know study their, their tactics and mannerisms. Uh, you know, a couple of them are really good with their hands. Uh, that's going to be real important during uh, pass pro. You know, just trying to time on my hands and you know get them on them and stay locked. And you know, uh, just they're also uh, high motor guys, real physical. Um, keep going, relentless. You know, you just got to coach uh, Hill always says just outwork them, all tough. Them. So that's basically what we got to do. Just keep going. You know, keep working, keep working, keep working, and uh, just stay focused. It's really, just rely on technique and. Uh, just play ball. This will be your last homecoming here at Cincinnati and one of your last final games here at Cincinnati. Has it started to hit you that your career is winding down? Uh, yeah, it has. Uh, you know, it's just got about six games left and I just can't believe it just went by so fast. You know, it seems like that yesterday I was doing, you know, scout team and red shirt workouts and all this and, you know, now I'm playing here as a senior. Got like uh, two more, three more home games here. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I'm just trying to take it one day at a time and, uh, you know, get better, stay focused, and just enjoy it while I can because I'm definitely missing when I leave. When I first met you as a high school senior at Sycamore High School, you were a pretty shy guy, and you've uh, really grown. I've seen you really grow just as a person in the five years here at Cincinnati. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I kind of opened up more, uh, kind of, you know, uh, really bonded with the guys, created a brotherhood, uh, just... You know, all the, you know, camaraderie and, you know, I mean, we're family out here. And, uh, you know, when I first got here, you know, I didn't know anybody, so I didn't really talk to people. But, you know, over time, you know, at higher ground, you know, forming bonds with people. And, you know, these, you know, it, it really is a brotherhood. You know, these are my brothers. And, uh, you know, it's just <laughs> having fun. You know, people can't see this, but I've got him gripped by the jersey from behind <laughs> like a defensive lineman to keep him close to me. But your mother's also a member of our site, been a real, real valuable person. Uh, to me personally, uh, she contacts me every now and then, and I know she's a, a big force in your life as well. Um, how much does she mean to you in, in, in bringing you up? Oh, man, uh, it means a lot. Um, she's always been there for me. Uh, you know, through the ups and the downs, and uh, I can always count on her to be by my side, whether I have a good game, a bad game, or indifferent. And, uh, you know, she's really important to me, number, number one in my life. It's, I do it all for her. It's, trying to you know do good and live right and just keep a smile on the face. Well she's done a great job with you Justin. Thanks. Thank you.